In this tutorial video, we will gain some practical knowledge of different NumPy functions that are utilized for generating NumPy arrays and determining their shapes. We will be utilizing NumPy's zeros, ones, and rand function to create the arrays. Additionally, we will examine their data types and shapes. So let's dive into the video and create NumPy array. First open Windows Explorer and create a new folder for housekeeping tasks. I have named mine computer vision, but you can choose any name and folder you prefer. Once you have created a folder, open it and create a new folder specifically for this video. I have named it creating NumPy array. So we are going to open Jupyter Notebook file in this folder. To open Jupyter Notebook, click start. And in the search tab, type Anaconda prompt. If you cannot find Anaconda prompt, that means Anaconda distribution is not installed. So watch my video on installation of Anaconda distribution that will install Python package as well. Link will be in the description and in the cards. Press enter. And at present we are in our base environment and in C colon. So we will be working in our base environment. If you want to create a separate environment, you can watch my video important conda commands. Link will be in the cards or the description. For this video, we need only one library that is NumPy for creating arrays. Also, we will install NB Black to format and prettify our code. To check whether NumPy is installed in our base environment, we can type conda list, press enter. So you can see NB Black and NumPy both are installed in my base environment. If you do not have them installed, you can install them by writing the command mentioned on the screen. To open Jupyter Notebook, go to Windows Explorer and copy the file path from the address bar. In Anaconda prompt, select the drive in which you will be opening Jupyter Notebook. So in my case, it is E drive. Press enter and then I will type CD space and I will paste the copy file path and press enter. So now I am in my folder where I have to open a Jupyter Notebook file. So I will type Jupyter Notebook and press enter. So this is our Jupyter interface. In order to open Jupyter Notebook, press new and click on Python 3. So we have now our Jupyter Notebook open. Let us give a file name. Let us first import our NumPy module and NB Black extension. So I'll first comment it out. Import the NumPy module and extension. So import NumPy as NP and load extension NB Black. So before executing this code, I will show you what NB Black will do. So I'll just type 2 plus 2 and press shift enter. So we got the output 4. So if you notice, this is still the same of what we have written. So if I run NB Black extension over here first, and then I will run 2 plus 2 cell. So you can see there's a space in between 2 plus 2. So this helps us in formatting and prettify our code. So that is the reason NB Black is used. All right. Now let us create a 2D NumPy array with 5 rows and 6 columns filled with 0. So first I will write a comment of what we are doing and then we can write np.0s and in parentheses we will assign our array that is 5 rows and 6 columns. So as you can see we have the output of 5 rows and 6 columns. We will assign a variable to this and then if we call our variable we get the same output. Now let's print the data type of this array. So first we'll write a comment, then we'll write a variable name dot d type. Press shift enter. So you can see that np array variable is of float64 data type. Now let us print the shape of the array. So first we'll write a comment and the code to print the shape is the variable name that is np array dot shape. Press shift enter. So you can see we have five rows and six columns. Also you know that pi is the row and 6 is the column. If you want to see only row, you can type the code like that, nparray.shape and in square brackets, then you can type the index. So index starts from 0. So if you want only 5, you can type 0, shift enter. Similarly, if you want only columns, so you can copy paste the command and write 1. So you have columns over here. You can also make code number 11 and 12 more informative by writing a print statement. So print with the F string. So we can type number of rows equal to and in curly brackets, 
you can give your code like that you can remove this and as you can see this is now more informative number of rows equal to five similarly i'll copy this command paste it over here so now we have columns and the shape np.array.shape will be index one so we have number of columns equal to six to insert more cells over here in the blank cell you can just press shift enter or you can click this plus button over here in order to add the cells you must have noticed that by default the numpy array takes float 64 as data type if you want to assign your own data type you can do that by typing np.0s five rows and six columns and then you can press shift tab in order to get a help and here you can see the np.0s take a shape first then d type order and like so it will give a d type over here so d type equal to and if you know the d type you can give it in quotes so d type equal to np dot u int 8 also will assign a variable to it so we'll assign the same variable now if you check np dot array dot d type it will be u int also if you remember the data type you can write it you can write it in quotes without calling np module so it gives the same effect so you have seen the arrays filled with zero now we'll create an array filled with ones so the code will be similar but in place of np dot zeros we'll put np dot ones so let us start with the comment and then np dot ones in parenthesis the first will be the shape and we'll also give a d type so the shape is pi by six and the d type is equal to np dot u in eight all right so press shift enter so we have our array filled with ones with five rows and six column let us assign a variable to it and call that variable again all right so now let us check the data type and shape of newly created array so i'll comment it first then i can type print np array dot d type and again print np array dot shape press shift enter so you can see the d type is u int and the shape is five by six now let us print the number of rows and columns so the code will be similar the one which you have written earlier so this is for rows and this one is for columns press shift enter so you can see the number of rows is five and number of columns is six next we'll create an array filled with random numbers so we'll first write a comment create an array filled with random numbers so the code will be np dot random dot rand and within parenthesis let us see what input the rand function will take so press shift and tab so it takes only values so we can assign five rows and six columns directly so as you can see it has generated random numbers in five rows and six columns also if you press shift enter again it will generate some other set of random numbers in five rows and six columns so let us assign a variable to it np array equal to press shift enter and then you can print the assigned variable that is np array which has created the new set of random numbers so let us check the data type and shape so you can type print np array dot d type and print np array dot shape so we have float 64 as the default data type and the shape is five rows and six columns also if you want to create your own array with the specified value you can do it like that np dot array and within the parenthesis you can give your values so in this case let me just press shift enter so you get a better idea so it has five rows and six columns so we can assign a d type data type as well data type equal to np dot u int eight press shift enter so you can create your own array like this also we'll assign a variable to it np dot array equal to press shift enter and then we can check the data type and shape as well so we have u int 8 as we have specified and we have five rows and six columns i hope you got the basic idea of how to create numpy arrays using zeros ones random number and creating array by your own set of numbers uh, so in the coming video on computer vision we will be extensively using numpy arrays 
So I hope you have liked this video. So please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in my next video.